and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm painting my kitchen tiles. So let me see and let me show you. So my kitchen tiles. So I had, like you can see on the other side, I had like funky stickers on them and then I painted the others. And now I'm going to be painting them white again. So they look boring basically because, well, I got a lot to tell you. So, you can guess the house is probably going back on the market. So that I spoke to the agent last week and I think I told you I hadn't heard anything. And the, the original buyer had agreed that we would meet halfway between the original agreed price and um, her second lower offer. Um, and I, I was chasing the agent saying, you know, I haven't heard anything for over a week now. What's going on? Did she agree? Did she not? And he, you know, she going ahead. And all I got from him eventually on Thursday morning was an email saying, haven't heard anything to the contrary, so I assume it's all going ahead. And what sort of answer is that? And I did respond to him and say, well, when I spoke to you last week, you were going to get a timeline from her. Where are we? And, oh, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. I mean, absolutely useless. So then um, I, I contacted my, I've been contacting my lawyers and she has not heard anything from their lawyers either. Um, but she did get the memorandum. So th this was on Friday morning. Then Friday afternoon, I get a call from the agent's office saying um, a bamboo surveyor is coming round. Uh, the bamboo surveyor is coming round on next Tuesday, and I was like, "What bamboo surveyor?" And they said, uh, "For the buyer." I said, "What does she need a bamboo surveyor for? She's already had someone come out to look how much it will cost to take it all out, and she's had a survey. What's what's going on?" And I, um, she said, and I basically, can you wait around all day because he doesn't have a time? I said, no, no, I can't. Go away and find out what's going on. Why is she asking for more surveys? And, you know, and if, if I, even if I agree to it, you give me an hour slot. I'm not sitting here all day waiting for them. <sighs> anyway, oh, so, oh, I'll ring you straight back. I never rang me back. So I contacted my lawyers and I told her what's going on. And I said... Can you, um, you know, find out what's going on from her lawyer? So she called them. And she, the, the lawyers said to her, uh, well, we haven't done anything because I haven't had the initial forms back from my client. I said, well, I said, well what are the initial forms? And what does that mean? Does that mean they haven't even started the searches? And, and her, she said, no. So seven and a half weeks since the original memorandum and agreement for sale and this lady hasn't even started on the legal work they haven't looked at the contracts they've had for seven and a half weeks they haven't started the searches i mean for someone that's desperate to buy the house seven and a half weeks this is just never going to happen is it anyway so i just don't believe this woman is serious and my gut which has always been my gut feeling from the beginning is she is just playing along and hoping to get this house at a bargain price and I've just had enough of it and I emailed the agents and I said look we need to put this back on the market um, and I emailed them because you phone them and they don't pick up the phone so I just bombard them with emails all the time um, as well as voicemails that they never answer to and I said this needs to go back on the market and you know if she wants to go ahead she can go alongside it but I'm not holding up she's wasted uh, seven and a half, eight weeks now, marketing time. I'm just not, I'm just not having it. I know exactly what she's up to. Anyhow, I uh, got very stressed about that. So, on the basis that I'm going to assume this is going back on the market, I thought, right, okay, maybe my house is a little bit bohemian or eclectic for some people. Maybe it puts them off. So I can do a few little things to make it more appealing so I can repaint these tiles white take all the stickers off but you know brighten up the kitchen a bit you know first impressions and everything 
Um, and we should actually get this done this weekend. I've got to say that. It's quite a lot to do, isn't there? Oh, blimey, getting it everywhere. And, um, yeah, right, so, well, so I've also, like, um, I I put a load of stuff in out of the garage, like stuff uh, that I haven't been able to sell and needs to, needs to go. I've got that all into my car so I can take it up to the recycling centre uh, this week. I fancy doing it at the weekend because it's quite busy, but I can do it one morning next week. So I've been doing that. And then that cleared a lot of space in the garage. So all the boxes that I've been storing around the house, I can then stack up in the garage and um, make some room so it's not around the house. Try and like make it you know look more homely, which is really difficult when you have no belongings anymore because they're all packed. <laughs> so it's it's difficult. And just trying to think, you know, like. Oh, I don't know. Like people say, like perhaps my house is too dark. I mean, it's not dark. It's just like I had the conservatory when I moved in here. It had one of those plastic roofs on it, which, as you will know, if you have a conservatory, are uh, absolutely useless because in the winter they're freezing, and in the summer uh, they're like greenhouses, and they made the whole house hot. So I had a roof put on it, and of course it made the living room a bit darker. So. Um, not a lot I can do about that, um, but I get. I guess I could like maybe put like take change my tablecloths and things to something lighter, just to you know lighten it up again. I suppose it's those little things, isn't it? I mean, it's just not my style at all. But then I have to think of a buyer wants a blank canvas, something they think they can move into. I know all this, so hence I'm doing the tile. So last night I took. I'm doing one side at a time. Um, uh, so last night I went round and I pulled the stickers off this side, um, which wasn't too bad, and then gave it all a good wash with like some like just detergent just to get all the grease and, and dirt off, and then I just paint over over them. I know it's going to take a couple of coats because I did it before when I painted them this grey colour. So um, yeah, just get on with it. So it doesn't look so great at the moment. It's a bit fiddly, but. You know, it's uh, but it will do when it's had a couple of coats. It's it's fine. It's a uh, let me show you what I mean. It looks you do it one coat and it's like looks a bit patchy. But by the time you've done a second coat, it clears it up. But yeah, so that will keep me busy for the rest of the day, probably part of the week. And of course, I'll have to get it done, won't I? <laughs> in case I have anyone come round. Now, my neighbour has a great big motorbike, and knowing that I've been very stressed this week, we've just got this is my little bit just shriveled. He's just taken me out on his motorbike. Now, I haven't been on a motorbike for 30 years, dear Lord. <laughs> now, I was fine to start with, like my ex husband had motorbikes and. I used to, well, I went on it a couple of times, but it used to scare the life out of me. So, but I, you know, I had friends that had bikes. So I'm kind of used, I kind of remember that you have to like relax into it and not fight going over the corners and even with the bike and all of that. So I don't know all that. But, you know, after 30 years, then it's got like a Kawasaki and, oh, blimey. It was fine to start with when, um, <laughs> Like getting out of town was fine. I thought, oh, this is nice actually. I'm enjoying this, and I relaxed into it. And I, but but like he's quite small as well, so I was trying to sit in the back of the bike, but I kept like falling forward, and I was trying to not squash him. And then we were on a country road, and he and he was saying, "I'm going to overtake. I'm going to overtake." And I was like, "Oh dear lord," like this, and he overtook. Well, he had the acceleration I thought was going to fall off the back of the bike, and he went past this so fast, and we just went flying past this car. I actually, you know, you know, excuse my language, I actually thought I'm going to poop myself. <laughs> I was so scared. <laughs> and, and then I started to feel a bit sick. So we had to pull over for a minute. And, and I just said, I said, hey, it's not, it's not you, Jamie, because I felt very safe with him. It was just that, that fear I thought was going to fall off the back of the bike, even though I know I'm probably not. And I was holding on. But, um, yeah. Anyway, so after that, he went a little bit slower. No more overtaking. Um, but he, but he still had a couple of cheeky 
like blast something about 80, 90 down some of the roads um, towards the end. But gosh, I tell you what, it's, it was it was exhilarating. It was such good fun. And the countryside we were driving around was so beautiful. And it was just like, it's like, you know, quite nice. It's sunny, not not too warm, but it's, it's sunny. But the wind just blowing around you and just trying to relax. And it was really good, actually. And uh, oh, no, I'm very grateful to me. It was like, no, oh, I know you're stressed, so let's go and do this. We've been talking about doing it for years and no, never got around to it, even though I lives next door. Anyhow, so that was my excitement for the day. Now, I shouldn't. You know, I don't know why I was like panicky on the back of it. I love a bit of a thrill ride, me, you know, I'm a bit of an adventure seeker sometimes. Um, but I do it again. I think now, after a bit, when I got a bit more com confident on it, um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be so panicky next time. Oh, Andy was going, he was leaning quite far around those plumbing corners. <laughs> oh, well, only live once. So, yeah, it's not great news about the house, but um, just have to keep going. I'm sure the agents will have some blah, blah nonsense at the weekend. But honestly, I'm absolutely done with this woman. I just feel like, you know, when you get that gut feeling that things aren't right. And I've had this from the beginning with her and I knew she was always going to lowball me and my gut feels this is she's just going to keep doing this until she gets it at a rock bottom price. <laughs> I think she thinks I'm desperate to move or something, but I just I'm not, I just need to get it back on the market and find someone who's actually serious. It's not going to be messing around like this. Anyway, better get on with this kitchen then, make it look all white. Um, uh, hopefully, when I've got it done in the week, I'll show you my handiwork. Thanks for watching. Keep smiling. That's all we can do, isn't it? Take care. Bye. Get on with this now.